Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Tibet County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our monthly new book alert video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections, June 2023. So I'm going to offer tips on some of the new and popular books coming out in the month ahead of us in the order in which they are published and then in alphabetical order because, you know, being a librarian, I like the ABCs to go ABC in sequence. So having said that, let's jump right in. So the first new book comes out on June 5th, and it's the new James Patterson thriller, Crossdown. This is an Alex Cross novel. So if you're familiar with the series, you have a clue as to what it's about. But just briefly, Alex Cross is gravely injured, and only his partner and friend, John Sampson, can keep him safe and get justice. And on a reader's note, this is the 31st book in the Alex Cross series, so if you're looking for a light thriller series to jump into this summer and you haven't read all of these, you might start with book one in the series, Along Came a Spider. On June 6th, we have All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Crosby. This one's a mystery. Titus Crown is the first black sheriff in the history of Sharon County, Virginia. In recent decades, Quiet Sharon has only had two murders. But after working for years as an FBI agent, Titus knows better than anyone that while his hometown might seem like a land of moonshine, cornbread, and honeysuckle, secrets always fester under the surface. Then a year to the day after Titus's election, a school teacher is killed by a former student, and the student is fatally shot by Titus's deputies. As Titus investigates the shootings, he unearths terrible crimes and a serial killer who has been hiding in plain sight, haunting the dirt lanes and woodland clearings of Sharon. So if you're looking for a new thriller, that sounds like it has your ticket, and mine too, All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Crosby. Our next title is the new Lisa C. novel. This is historical fiction. It's called Lady Tan's Circle of Women, and it has, yes indeed, powerful female protagonists. In this case, two gals who are living in the past, so they have even more challenges than women do in the present. But I'm digressing. Let me tell you about the book. From a young age, Zuan learns about women's illnesses, many of which relate to childbearing. Alongside a young midwife in training, Mei Ling, the two girls find fast friendship and a mutual purpose, and they vow to be forever friends, sharing in each other's joys and struggles. But when Zuan is sent into an arranged marriage, her mother-in-law forbids her from seeing Mei Ling and from helping the women and girls in the household. In essence, her mother-in-law takes the traditional approach. Women are meant to be subservient to men in the household, and we're not surprised about that. So having said that, we know Zuan is to act like a proper wife, according to her husband's family. So the question becomes, how might a woman like Zuan break free of those traditions and go on to treat women and girls from every level of society and lead a life of such importance that many of her remedies are still used five centuries later? And we'll have to read the book to find out. It's coming out June 6th. Our next recommended title is bound to be popular. This is a fun, romantic, cozy, little bit of drama, little bit of general fiction. It's called A Little Ray of Sunshine by Kristen Higgins. And if you look at the cover of the book, how could anything super bad happen by the end of this book if there's a cute dog on the cover? That's hard to do. So 
has a happy ending, I'm sure. Anyway, I'm digressing again. Let me tell you about the plot. A kid walks into your bookstore, and guess what? He's your son, the one you put up for adoption 18 years ago, the one you never told anyone about. Surprise! And a huge surprise it is for just about everyone. It's a surprise for his adoptive mother, Monica, who thought she had a close relationship with Matthew, her nearly adult son. But apparently he felt the need to secretly arrange a vacation to Cape Cod for the summer so he could meet his birth mother without a word to either her or his dad. And needless to say, it's also a surprise to Harlow, the woman who secretly placed her baby for adoption so many years ago. She spent the years since then building a quiet life. She runs a bookstore with her grandfather, hangs out with her four younger siblings, and is more or less happily single. Though she can't help gravitating towards Grady Byrne, her old friend from high school. He's moved back to town, three-year-old daughter in tow, and no wife in the picture. But Harlow has always figured her life had to be child-free, so that complicates things. And you can imagine how it unfolds from there. Our next book is a mystery, and a mystery thriller at that. It's called Near Miss by Stuart Woods and Brett Battles. This is a Stone Barrington novel. Following a string of adventures, Stone Barrington is enjoying some downtime in New York City when a chance encounter introduces him to a charming new companion. Too bad she also comes with the baggage of a persistent ex-boyfriend intent on retribution. As Stone skillfully dodges each disturbance, it becomes clear that there's an even more treacherous game being played behind the scenes. When long-standing grudges resurface, Stone is brought back into the orbit of some familiar enemies. He must use all of his tricks, as well as those of a few old friends, to evade trouble before it's too late. But this time, danger might just catch up with him. And on a reader's note, and I can scarcely believe it, but this is the 61st book in the Stone Barrington series. So if you'd like to jump in and start reading from the beginning, book one, which is from 1991, is called New York Dead. Our next title has a classic summer reading title. It's called Same Time Next Summer by Annabelle Monaghan. And this has a dash of finding herself, general fiction, and romance. It's the ultimate summer read about an engaged woman who comes face to face with her first love who she hasn't seen in 14 years, but who she spent every summer with from age 5 to 17 when he broke her heart, calling into question everything she thought she knew about their love story and herself. We'll have to read the book to find out the details, but I think one thing's for certain, she's going to find out more about how things are and who she is in same time next summer. Our next new title is General Fiction. It's the new Andre Dubas novel, Such Kindness. Tom Lowe's identity and pride are invested in the work he does with his back and his hands. He designed and built his family's dream home, working extra hours to pay off the mortgage he took on the property, convinced he is making every sacrifice for the happiness of his wife and son. Until, because we knew there was going to be an until, and there is one, until, in a moment of fatigued inattention, shingling a roof in too bright sunlight, he falls. 
in constant pain, addicted to painkillers, and at the cost of his relationships with his wife and son, Tom slowly comes to realize that he can never work again. If he is not a working man, who is he? He is not, he believes, the kind of person who lives in subsidized housing, though that is where he has ended up. He is not the kind of person who hatches a scheme to commit convenience check fraud together with neighbors he considers lowlifes until he finds himself stealing his banker's trash. Who is Tom Lowe and who will he become? And that's what he has to discover, and readers will too, by reading the book Such Kindness, coming out June 6th. Our next new title is The Survivor by Iris Johansson. It's an Eve Duncan thriller. When archaeologist Riley Smith comes to ask Eve Duncan for help, Eve has to say no. Traveling halfway around the world on a dangerous quest is not her expertise as a forensic sculptor. But Eve is intrigued by the prospect of an isolated island that holds a secret locked in time. Traveling to Southeast Asia, Riley is aware of the threat from treasure hunters who are already searching and have no qualms, none whatsoever, about killing to get what they want. When she successfully evades them and finds the perfectly preserved body of a female warrior, it is just what she needs to entice Eve to help unlock the mystery. As these two strong women seek answers about this extraordinary past life, Riley makes a living, breathing discovery that will change history. If she can escape the island and survive long enough to share it with the world. That sounds like a thrilling read, and our characters in these books need to look out for the words until and if, because oh boy. <laughs> Our next new title is Watch Us Shine by Marissa De Los Santos, and this one's general fiction. Cornelia Brown is reeling from a terrifying act of violence when she gets word that her mother has been badly injured in an accident. Cornelia returns to Virginia to the house she grew up in, and in the weeks that follow, she watches her mother Ellie struggle to recover, fluctuating between her usual crisp can-do clarity and periods of delirium, during which she seems to be haunted by a devastating loss from her past. In grief-stricken tones, Ellie begs Cornelia to bring her the northern lights, and despite her confusion at this mysterious plea, Cornelia vows to do so. She thinks she was my mother, and she wanted the northern lights. I was her daughter, and would have given her anything, anything. With the help of her prickly sister, Ollie, Cornelia embarks on a mission to piece together the lost years of their mother's life. People, places, and events spanning Ellie's late teens through her mid-twenties. Cornelia and Ollie's quest takes them to unexpected places and into the worlds of strangers whose lives Ellie touched and irrevocably changed. As the sisters uncover truths about their mother's life, some beautiful, some ugly, some tragic, Cornelia herself begins to heal to forgive herself, and to find her way back home. That, too, sounds like a good read. So many books, not enough time to read them all, but that one's going on my reading list. And our final June 6th release is bound to be popular. It's the new Isabel Allende novel, The Wind Knows My Name. 
and this one's historical fiction. The author is known for her historical fiction titles, so let me dig into an overview of the plot. Vienna, 1938. Samuel Adler is five years old when his father disappears during Kristallnacht, the night his family loses everything. As her child's safety becomes ever harder to guarantee, Samuel's mother secures a spot for him on a kinder transport train out of Nazi-occupied Austria to England. He boards alone, carrying nothing but a change of clothes and his violin. Arizona, 2019, eight decades later. Anita Diaz and her mother board another train fleeing looming danger in El Salvador and seeking refuge in the United States. But their arrival coincides with the new family separation policy and seven-year-old Anita finds herself alone at a camp in Nogales. Meanwhile, Selena Duran, a young social worker, enlists the help of a successful lawyer in hopes of tracking down Anita's mother. Intertwining past and present, The Wind Knows My Name tells the tale of these two unforgettable characters, both in search of family and home. It is both a testament to the sacrifices that parents make and a love letter to the children who survive the most unfathomable dangers and never stop dreaming. And moving on to June 13th, our first recommended read is Be Mine by Richard Ford. From Pulitzer Prize winner Richard Ford, the final novel in the world of Frank Bascom, one of the most indelible characters in American literature. Over the course of four celebrated works of fiction in almost 40 years, Richard Ford has crafted an ambitious, incisive, and singular view of American life as lived. Unconstrained, astute, provocative, often laugh out loud funny, Frank Bascom is once more our guide to the great American midway. Now in the twilight of life, a man who has occupied many colorful lives as sports writer, father, husband, ex-husband, friend, real estate agent, Bascom finds himself in the most sorrowing role of all, caregiver to his son Paul, diagnosed with ALS. On a shared winter odyssey to Mount Rushmore, Frank, in typical Bascom fashion, faces down the mortality that has assured each of us, and in doing so, confronts what happiness might signify at the end of days. So if you're looking for a deeper read, check out Be Mine by Richard Ford, coming out June 13th. Our next read is the new Ellen Hildebrand novel, which is bound to be popular this summer. It's called The Five Star Weekend. And the main character's name is Hollis Shaw. I keep wanting to call Hollis Shaw Hollis Brown after the old Bob Dylan song. But no, this Hollis is a she and definitely it's Hollis Shaw. So having digressed a little bit, let me tell you what's going on with Hollis Shaw. Her life seems to be picture perfect. She's the creator of the popular food blog, Hungry with Hollis, and is married to Matthew, a dreamy heart surgeon. But after she and Matthew get into a heated argument one snowy morning, he leaves for the airport and is killed in a car accident. And then the cracks in Hollis's perfect life grow deeper. So when Hollis hears about something called a five-star weekend, one woman organizes a trip for her best friend from each phase of her life, her teenage years, her 20s, her 30s, and midlife, she decides to host her own five-star weekend 
on Nantucket. But The Weeknd doesn't turn out to be a joyful Hallmark movie. The husband of Hollis's childhood friend Tatum arranges for Hollis's first love, Jack Finnegan, to spend time with them, stirring up old feelings. And as you can imagine, drama and a finding out what is important story follows. The next new book coming out June 13th is The Spectacular by Fiona Davis. This is historical fiction and mystery. New York City, 1956. 19-year-old Marion Brooks knows she should be happy. Her high school sweetheart is about to propose and sweep her off to the traditional life everyone always expected they'd have together. A quiet house in the suburbs, Marion staying home to raise their future children while her husband works. But instead, there are those prime words again, but instead, Marion finds herself feeling trapped. So when she comes across an opportunity to audition for the famous Radio City Rockettes, that glamorous precision dancing troupe, she jumps at the chance to exchange her predictable future for the dazzling life of a performer. Meanwhile, this city is reeling from a string of bombings orchestrated by a person the press has dubbed the Big Apple Bomber, who has been terrorizing the citizens of New York for 16 years by planting bombs in popular spaces. With the public in an uproar over the lack of any real leads after a years-long manhunt, the police turn in desperation to Peter Griggs, a young doctor at a local mental hospital who espouses a radical new technique, psychological profiling. As both Marion and Peter find themselves unexpectedly pulled in to the police search for the bomber, the book unfolds. And how it turns out, we'll have to read it to see. Moving on to titles released on June 20th, we have The Only One Left by Riley Sager. And this, of course, is a thriller. In 1929, a Lizzie Borden-like massacre, all the members of the family Hope, save one, died. Leonora survived and was accused of the murders, but proof was never found. It's now 1983, and home health aide Kit McDear arrives at a decaying Hope's End to care for Leonora after her previous nurse fled in the middle of the night. In her 70s, and confined to a wheelchair, Lenora was rendered mute by a series of strokes and can only communicate with Kit by tapping out sentences on an old typewriter. One night, Lenora uses it to make a tantalizing offer. I want to tell you everything. It wasn't me, Lenora said, but she's the only one not dead. As Kit helps Lenora write about the events, leading to the Hope family massacre, it becomes clear there's more to the tale than people know. And to find out just what's going on and what happened in the past, we'll have to read the book, The Only One Left, coming out June 20th. And our final June 20th pick is the new Ruth Ware thriller, Zero Days. Ruth Ware returns with this adrenaline-fueled thriller that combines Mr. and Mrs. Smith with The Fugitive, about a woman in a race against time to clear her name and find her husband's murderer. Hired by companies to break into buildings and hack security systems, Jack and her husband Gabe are the best penetration specialists in the business. But after a routine assignment goes horribly wrong, Jack arrives home 
to find her husband dead. To add to her horror, the police are closing in on their number one suspect, her. And thus the book kicks off. That sounds like a great summer read, doesn't it? It's definitely going on my to-read list. Coming out on June 27th is the new Steve Barry and Grant Blackwood thriller, The Ninth Man. Main character is Luke Daniels, who, as the book opens, is in London when he receives a frantic call from an old friend, Jillian Stein, who is in trouble. She made a mistake, and now her life may be in danger. She needs Luke's help immediately. Racing to Belgium, Luke quickly finds that she was right. A shadow team of highly trained operatives are there on the hunt. Intervening, he finds himself embroiled in a war between two determined sides, one seeking the truth and the other trying to escape the past. A war that has already claimed one life and is about to claim more. Thomas Rowland is a Washington insider, a kingmaker, problem solver, but also a man with a past. For him, everything turns on what happened on November 22, 1963, in Dallas, Texas. What history has recorded is wrong. There is more to the story, much more, and Thomas Rowland is at the center of that terrible reality. But forces are working against him, and Rowland will do anything to keep the world from actually learning what happened on that fateful day, including killing Luke, Jillian, and anyone else who might be a threat. So if you're looking for a thriller with a bit of history to it, check out The Ninth Man, available June 27th. Another great summer read coming out June 27th is The Beach at Summerlee by Beatrice Williams. This one's historical fiction. June 1946, as the residents of Winthrop Island prepare for the first summer season after the war, a glamorous new figure moves into the guest cottage at Summerlee, the idyllic seaside estate of the wealthy Peabody family. To Amelia Winthrop, daughter of Summerlee's year-round caretaker, and a descendant of the island settlers, Olive Rainsford opens a window into a world of shining possibility. While Amelia spent the war years caring for her incapacitated mother, Olive traveled the world, married fascinating men, and involved herself in political causes. She's also the beloved aunt of the two surviving Peabody sons, Amory and Shep, with whom Amelia has a tangled romantic history. As the summer wears on, Amelia develops a deep rapport with Olive, who urges her to leave the island for a life of adventure. While romance blossoms with the sturdy and honorable Shep, and unto this scene, an FBI agent appears. So there's a little bit of drama and mystery in this novel, too. Also coming out June 27th is the new historical tale by Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. You may recall that they wrote The Personal Librarian about Belle de Costa Green, who was the personal librarian for financier J.P. Morgan. That also is a top-notch book. And I bet this one will be, too. Not surprisingly, the book titled The First Ladies is historical fiction. So having given you that send up, let me tell you about the novel. The daughter of formerly enslaved parents, Mary McLeod Bethune, refuses to back down as white supremacists attempt to thwart her work. She marches on as an activist and an educator 
And as her reputation grows, she becomes a celebrity, revered by titans of business and recognized by U.S. presidents. Eleanor Roosevelt herself is awestruck and eager to make her acquaintance. Initially drawn together because of their shared belief in women's rights and the power of education, Mary and Eleanor become fast friends, confiding their secrets, hopes, and dreams, and holding each other's hands through tragedy and triumph. When Franklin Delano Roosevelt is elected president, the two women begin to collaborate more closely, particularly as Eleanor moves towards her own agenda separate from FDR, a consequence of the devastating discovery of her husband's secret love affair. Eleanor becomes a controversial first lady for her outspokenness, particularly on civil rights. And when she receives threats because of her strong ties to Mary, it only fuels the women's desire to fight together for justice and equality. This is the story of two different, yet equally formidable, passionate, and committed women, and the way in which their singular friendship helped form the foundation for the modern civil rights movement. And that one's going at the top of my to-read list as soon as it comes out on June 27th. And our final June recommended read, also coming out on the 27th, is also a thriller. Lots of thrillers on this list. It's The Last Sinner by Lisa Jackson. There are killers so savage, so twisted, that they leave a mark not just on their victims, but on everyone who crosses their path. For detectives Benson Montoya, Father John, a fake priest who used the sharpened beads of a rosary to strangle prostitutes is one such monster. Benz thought he'd ended that horror years ago when he killed Father John deep in the swamp. But now there are chilling signs he may have been wrong. A new victim has surfaced. Her ruined body staged in deliberate unmistakable detail. Either it's a terrifying copycat or Father John, the detective's own recurring nightmare, has come back to haunt New Orleans. Another death and another. Bence is growing convinced that Father John isn't just back, he's circling closer, targeting those Bence loves most. And this time, he won't be stopped until the last sinner has paid the ultimate price. And on a reader's note, this is the ninth book in the Benson Montoya series. If you'd like to start reading from the beginning, check out book one, Hot Blooded. If you'd like to put your name on the holds list for any of the titles seen in this video, let me know or you can wait until they become available and you see them in StarCat. But if you don't see any of these titles listed in StarCat, as you wouldn't right this moment because they haven't been published yet, you need to just let me know that you want to have your name put on the list and I'll do that for you. You can let me know by sending me an email. My email address is my last name, R-E-I-M-E-R, -E -E and my first initial L at stls.org. You can alternately give me a call at the library's main number, area code 607-936-3713. My extension is 212. Or you can submit a purchase request through the library's website, and that way your name will get added to the holds list when the title is purchased and then becomes available in the catalog. So to do that, you visit ssclibrary.org, and then you click on the services menu to open it. And from there, you fill out the purchase request form. Want more reading, listening, and viewing recommendations? Check out the Tech and Book Talk blog, 
which offers weekly and monthly recommendations, and the back catalog of Library Connections videos found on the Southeast Domain County Library's YouTube page. And those are some of the hot books coming out in June. I'll be back next month with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great month.